Liz Capo in the morning. It is 727 on AM 970, The Answer. Good morning, good morning. Happy Halloween. Mikey, I got you there, buddy. I got my son. I'm calling my son. I want to see. You know what the thing is? I don't. I want to see the outfits. That's the only thing I miss. I'm not a Halloween guy, but I, I called my, my Michael. Michael's dressed as the Pope, so I wanted to see what my Michael is dressed. And Dr. Elena Fred, welcome. Thank great. You. Thanks so much great, for having me. Great to see you. So is, is your your son is is dressed as uh, the guy that invented really electricity? Yes, Nikola Tesla. How what made? How old is Daniel now? <laughs> He's eight. Eight years old. Great kid. Bright kid. And he actually what made him dress as, as Tesla? So he loved the Tesla car. And I said, Well, do you know who it's named after? And he had no idea. So uh, we researched it, and uh, and he's Nikola Tesla today. That's that is so <laughs> And you saw the tweet that, uh, this morning. Did I was it? Yes, it was amazing. I, Thank I, you. That I, was a great wake I, up. I had a quote from Tesla, and I saw it. And so I go, Let me send it out uh, to you because you, we had this conversation Saturday night at our friend's house. And and I said, but that was so amazing. What a smart guy. And then Frankie just said that Tesla, he's the guy that invented the, the radio. We, we t the Italians say Marconi was the guy. <laughs> no, no, it was Tesla. Te oh, that, wait a minute. Now, and where's where's Tes Tesla's Croatian, you said? He, he's Croatian, and he immigrated to the U.S. when he was 28. Wow. Yeah. And you got the but that was uh, like 150 years ago. I know, right? I know, so, I know, I know, I know. So, he was ahead of his time. Dr. Elena Fred is uh, one of the brightest uh, young doctors that I know, and we, we chat a lot of board-certified neurologists, a clinical a neurophysiologist specializing in infection-induced uh, autoimmune, autoimmune disorders. You are from Siberia? I am. Oh, how? Now, give us the road before we get into all the things that I worry about for my children. The road from Siberia to New York City. It's cold and it's long, <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. It's cold <laughs> and it's damp. Oh man! So you did you like Siberia? Is there are there neighborhoods there? Forgive me, I'm such a dork. Yeah, there are, and actually, Siberia has a lot of oil. Uh, so it's oh, yeah. Right, so right, they right. were my grandparents moved down there uh, because they were young engineers. So they were recruiting uh, young professionals, and they were going to pay them three times the salary. So they were happy to move down there. Wow! And then did you come with your parents here to America? I did. I came here when I was eight. Wow! And then you came to, and get to New York. To New York, yeah. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. There it is. Yeah, Canada. you got it. I know. All roads <laughs> lead guess. to Brooklyn. I'm a Jersey guy, but all roads lead to Brooklyn. <laughs> The, the, so, Dr. Fred, you, you, I, I listen. We're we're friends, and and, and listen, we love you. I, you know, I have great affection, great respect for you. But I'm a worry wart, and I always ask you about Lyme disease. I worry about my kids. You are one of the foremost experts in this. And I, with our friend Ray, who's a, a dinner party we were at the other night, he really comes up with the medicine to fight this. So it, walk me through this before we find out the red flags for Lyme, because Long Island, Staten Island now, yes. New Jersey, yes. and Hunterdon County, there's a it's it's epidemic the the Lyme disease. So if you get Lyme early on, it could cause, and I'm reading this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doc, it could cause aut autism, it could cause attention deficit, and even Alzheimer's. They're saying now. Yes, yeah, so um, Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that um, is most commonly transmitted through a tick bite. And as you know, we have this epidemic uh, of ticks because of a couple of uh, warm winters and uh, the mice population is exploding. And I agree with the fact that certain patient population can have uh, an adverse reaction mm. to vaccines. I am not against vaccines wholeheartedly. I think that they definitely serve a purpose. I do think that uh, to some extent we over vaccinate our population and we also give vaccines um, to patients who may have an abnormal immune system, an immune system that's under stress. Mm. And the Lyme disease patients are actually part of that patient population. So these vaccines can trigger kind of a worsening immune response and then uh, later on lead to these autoimmune disorders that we just talked about wow. and, and causing symptoms like developmental issues that can be uh, classified as autism. That's scary. That is just scary. That, and people aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'll get real controversial because I know you're a very independent uh, doctor, but a, they're blaming. I don't want to blame the drug companies. I think that's the wrong thing to do. But the drug companies, when they say you got to vaccinate, then they, you say, well, the vaccine can cause a problem. 
they don't want to talk about it because the, it does cause a problem. They have more drugs to mask the original problem. So it seems like it's a big industry. Is, is that a fair criticism of the pharmaceutical industry? Uh, well, I think that the medical industry should step in and instead of having kind of these blind vaccinations mm. for people, we should really have markers. And there actually, there are some markers, there's some alleles. For example, for patients with Lyme disease, there is an HLA-DR4 uh, allele that you can check in blood and see if these people will be predisposed to an adverse reaction to a Lyme vaccine or can develop chronic symptoms. Symptoms. And I think the medical community is kind of not catching up and we're just vaccinating everyone because they're three months old or six months old, but people should be checked. And some of these things can even be checked in cord blood when the baby's born. So you would know ahead of time kind of yeah. if you need yeah. to spread out their vaccines. Yeah. So Lyme disease, how do we treat Lyme disease properly? What should we do? Uh, if some, I mean, what's, what are the symptoms, first of all, when, with Lyme disease itself? Yeah. So early on in the disease process, the symptoms are kind of vague, which is why it's hard to diagnose mm -hmm. it. So it's a headache, fever, joint aches, dizziness, and uh, the rash. The rash that everyone looks for, the right, bullseye right, rash, right, 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 that's right. quite uncommon. So only about 20% of patients will actually have a rash. And it's sort of a false sense of security for people when they don't have a rash, it means I don't have Lyme disease, but that's not the case. And then later on, as I mentioned, it can present as various uh, problems, including uh, unrelenting headaches, uh, insomnias, Jeez. fatigue, you know, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. What's fibromyalgia? Lady Gaga said she has that. What is that? Yeah, actually, that's interesting. Uh, Lady Gaga in her latest documentary, yeah. uh, Five Foot Two, talks a lot about how she has fibromyalgia. And fibromyalgia is really a symptom. Um, that's how I look at it, where you have basically unrelenting pain throughout your body, uh, which we don't have a cause for. Um, and can, they can also have headaches and they can have fatigue mm. and mood issues. Uh, how, does, doesn't that sound similar to what I was just talking about? Yes, exactly right. So not that all patients who have fibromyalgia have Lyme disease, but I certainly think that they should be checked for that because the treatments would mm. be vastly different. Sim Symptomatic versus causative, right? Yeah. What we just talked about. Dr. Elena Frid, and also, um, and we'll let you go and thank you. This young lady got up for us this morning, <laughs> came all the way across town, took the subway. Took the subway. God bless a brave girl. <laughs> took the subway like that because you also handle like migraine headaches. A lot of people come, a lot of women come to you with migraine headaches. That's right. So where can we get in touch with you, Elena? Oh, so elenafridmd.com is my website. Uh, e L E N A F R I D Fred. Okay, dot com. A Elena Fred M D dot com. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Listen, you gotta come back. I will. Keep it, I worry. Oh, I did want to give you a gift. Please. I created this um, product for oh, uh, yeah, Dr. Is... Fred Kidswear, and I know you have a little one. Yeah. I know you have more than one, but this is for your little one. <laughs> Uh, to prevent You'd against, to, against six bites. Yeah. This is great. Check Dr. It out. Frid Kids Wear. You got to check this out. The, oh, this yeah. it's, and it, it's insect repellent you love to wear. Yeah. Genius. Yes, it's a genius you. idea. Dr. Frid Kids Wear. You are so welcome anytime. Thanks for getting up Thanks for us so this morning. Thanks so much. Elena, all the very best to you. God bless. Everybody knows this guy. No, everybody knows he can do a radio show. Joe Piscopo. Mornings, 6 to 10 on AM 970. The answer.